Thank you so much for this welcome, and it is a joy. I mean, we've been here for a little while, so um, uh, just worshiping with you, and so it's a joy to be here, and I bring greetings from Kathy and myself, and uh, yeah, woohoo! <laughs> um, so it's a joy to be here, and uh, the worship was powerful this morning. That one song, uh, there was a shift in the atmosphere. I don't know whether you sensed it, uh, but when he was talking to us um, through the song about um, the roar, um, and I'm going to mention that a little bit uh, to begin with, just very briefly, I have so much rumbling in my spirit uh, that it is um, difficult for me to know what exactly direction I'm supposed to go. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, because of everything that happened this morning and the way the Spirit of God has, has moved. So we want to be sensitive to what he's doing here. And we don't want to just move uh, because we think we know the direction ourselves. We want to be in step with the Spirit of God and what he wants to do. Because it's very important to know uh, the ear of our ear is in tune with what the Holy Spirit is doing today. Because he is doing something very special and new in the world today. There is a worldwide revival going on. And uh, it's very important that we are in touch with that revival. Amen? Because God is not dead. <laughs> I'm here to declare that to you. I got this in my spirit when I was gone. By the way, I just came back from uh, two trips. I was, down, I was in Edmonton, and I preached in a church in Edmonton, Alberta. And we had a great time. It was a, a church that was just started six months ago, and they already have uh, 100 people in their church. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really exploding. The man of God there is, is uh, just powerful, anointed, and so on. He came with us down to Florida. We spent some time at this church that has over 6,000 in it on Sunday morning. And uh, they're seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. Anyway, I'm not even going to get into that because that's another uh, discussion way. But this is the thing. God is not dead. You've got to get that in your spirit this morning. And we have got to understand that he is alive and he's on the inside of you. That God who is alive is inside of you and he's roaring like a lion. And so I got this in my spirit and I want to declare it here this morning because I declared it in Edmonton and I believe the Lord wants me to take it right across uh, Canada with this message. Heaven roar and fire fall. Heaven roar and fire fall. And then come shake the ground with the sound of revival. So, you know what? I think I'm going to start this heaven roar and fire fall meeting. That's what I'm going to start. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to happen this morning. But heaven roar and fire fall. Do we, when, we, when we say words, I was thinking about that, even when we sing words up on the screen, do we really know what we're saying with our mouth? Do we understand what we're saying? Because sometimes, and I'm not saying this for you, but I know for me, I've been a Christian a long time. And... Uh, Sometimes we can just say words because we've been saying them for so long. And we get caught up in the words and we just, we, we think we know them. But we need to get re-baptized in a fresh baptism of what these words mean. 
God baptizes afresh with what these words mean. Heaven roar and fire fall on us again. I believe in a sense we had that atmosphere this morning. It had fallen here in a very, very special way. It fell in the book of Acts. If you remember in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the, it fell in a, a particular way and the whole building shook. You know, when God fell in the New Testament, building shook, prison doors opened up. Wouldn't it be great if a prison door opened up here in Guelph? Wouldn't it be great if people's prison doors opened up here in this city and in this region? I'm praying for that. I'm believing God for that, that prison doors open up. So we need to start declaring things like um, the greatest days in my life and in your life, and I'm going to get you to say this in a moment, but the greatest days in your life and my life are not in the past. They are in the future. So let me say, let, just repeat this. We'll repeat it phrase by phrase. The greatest days in my life are not in the past. They're in my future. Hallelujah. Doesn't that sound good? So we need to make decrees of faith and, and victory in, uh, in that sense because you have authority in your area, in your home, in your neighborhood, and that's what makes Guelph a place for revival. It, it's not because, you know, we have something... Uh, special or we've got a lot of money or whatever. It's because Jesus lives on the inside of us. And the anointing is on you. The Bible says you have an anointing from the Holy One. And that anointing is on you to bring revival. So you have got to understand the Holy Spirit gives you then that authority in to bring revival from your home to your neighborhood. And, uh, man, then what happens is you come into church on Sunday and you celebrate what he's done. Hallelujah. This becomes a celebration. Guess what? Guess what happened around me last week? Guess what took place in my neighborhood last week? Guess what he did around me last week? I saw the blind see. I saw the lame leap up. That's what God wants to do. This isn't, uh, we shouldn't be thinking in terms, see, God wants to bring us up a level in the church. We're thinking far too limited, folks. We're thinking, well, that was in the book of Acts. Well, I'm believing we're going to rewrite the book of Acts. It's Acts 29, folks. Acts 29 is coming. All right, Acts 29. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to our scripture, if we can, the first one that I have here, and let's believe God for what is uh, going to happen here uh, to today. Amen? All right, let me see if I can get into my, uh, into my notes here. There we go. All right, we're talking this morning about the bridge... Uh, to your promise. Grace is the bridge to your promise. So Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. And you can follow along with me. This is in the New King James Version. Therefore, it is of faith. Everybody read it with me. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Some of us have had promises that have been unfulfilled or dormant. 
And I'm speaking to every single one of us here this morning. Because most of us either are living there or have lived in that reality. Some of you have even had dreams and promises crushed or delayed until today. God is declaring a bridge for you. I want you to notice verse 16 that we just read. That bridge connects your promise to him. The bridge is grace. On the one side is the promise. On the other side is faith. All right? You have been given precise and powerful promises by God. This church has been given this too. A mission and a destiny to fulfill. In the natural, you can't see it. You know, right now, wouldn't it be great if we walked in here and you couldn't find a seat to sit down in? Wouldn't it be great if you drove into the parking lot and it was full or the streets around here, it took you five minutes to walk to church instead of two minutes? Do you see what I mean? Stop limiting yourself. Begin to think, one Sunday, I'm not going to be able to get into the building. That's what God wants you to begin to start dreaming Start seeing these things, okay, and speaking it out, yes. Thank you, honey. Start speaking it out. Uh, maybe I should get her up here, and she could be my <laughs> team teacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, this church has been given this kind of mission and destiny. God told me to speak into your vision, into your destiny, into your mission, what God has called you to do, and start speaking it out, start declaring it out. But that isn't it. In the natural, you can't see it with your eyes, but I declare that God is giving you eagle eyes to see, to perceive things, to see clearer to see further than you've ever seen before, to ride on the winds of the Spirit. Isaiah 40, verse 31, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. There's a fresh wind coming. There's a fresh wind blowing. And there's a fresh fire falling. Why? Because he loves us so much. We heard that already in the message, in the prophetic message, that he wants us totally captivated by his presence and nothing else. He wants us in that place where we were several minutes ago. He wants us in that place. It's all about him, and it's all about his promise. What has he promised you? Has it been misplaced? Has it been forgotten? Has it been shipwrecked or possibly even died? I've come today commissioned by God to activate that promise. Paul speaks some interesting things here that we should quickly look at together. Notice verse 17. It says there that God is the resurrection. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Amen. 
So God is resurrection, and he calls those things as the, uh, which do not exist as, those that, as though they did. Job twenty two twenty eight 28 says it this way. You will also declare a thing, and it shall be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Also, Proverbs eighteen twenty one says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You must be very careful what you say, what you speak, because there is death and there is resurrection in your tongue, what you speak. So could it be that the reason why we haven't seen the promise is because we've been saying negative death spoken things? I'm not, I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not speaking, um, I'm not trying to be against you this morning. I'm trying to use my words correctly here. I don't want you to, I don't want you to feel bad about yourself. I'm trying to encourage you this morning, turn your speaking around today. Turn it around Begin to speak differently. Choose today to speak di differently. And begin to say, today, man, when I leave this place, I'm picking up that promise. And I'm going to say, Lord, today this thing is rising from the grave. It is going to come back to life. This promise that you gave me is coming back to life. It may look dead. Guess what? Sarah's womb looked dead. There was no way in the world that she could have a baby. There was no way that Abraham could give a child to that woman. But God said, you're going to have a child. And what God says comes to pass. So you may say, well, there's no way that that could come to, to that there is no way that that promise could ever come to pass. Ah, uh, but you that see the reason why it hasn't come to pass is because that's what you say. Turn what you say around and say, I serve a God of the impossible. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So you, you, you must hear this because this is what the word of the Lord is to you and this is what the word of the Lord is to this church. You must begin to see and perceive things differently. And God is going to give you, if you receive it, he's going to give you eagle eyes to see things differently. Now, let's go to uh, Hebrews 11, 1 to 3, for further understanding on this. And let's read it together. Do you have that? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Keep going. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Keep going. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay. So how was this faith a good report? We know that faith works by love, according to Galatians 5, 6. And in the love of God, we know, we absolutely know that God is a God of love and that because he is a God of love, that grace then works through God and he then becomes the God or the, gra the grace is from God. So this good report was obtained through not by their achievements, but by the power and the favor of God. And this, folks, is a good working uh, definition of grace. Now listen to this. This is very important. Because, why is this important? Because a lot of people think they have to do this, do this, do this, do this. If I can just work this, work this, work this. Well, it's not going to work that way. You can't do it. You can't make this happen. This church is not going to grow by you doing, 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 doing 
all this stuff. It's going to grow when you come under the rest of God. And you come under the anointing of God. And you do exactly what he tells you to do. That's when it works. Okay? So this definition, write it down if you can. God's power, influence, benefit, and unearned favor on your life that releases blessing. That's what grace means. Let me read it again. God's power, influence, benefit, and unearned favor on your life that releases blessing. Abraham and Sarah continued to believe with grace. That's the only way they could do that. They didn't become weak. They spoke words of life and blessing. Now watch this. Even though there was deadness in her womb, they spoke life. This is what we need today. Amen. Go back, go back, folks, to this promise and draw on grace. Put grace on on in the midst of your deadness, and watch me now. Isaiah 62, verses 3 and 4, comes to live for you and me in your life. Okay, now watch. Do you know, let me just, I got to do this. I was reading it right before the service. I got, I know, Holy Spirit, you're telling me to read it. I got to do this. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Uh, you you, you got you to gotta hear this part. It's, it's so powerful. Isaiah, do we have, did I put Isaiah 62? Do you have that one? I'm not sure. Okay, so put that one up on the screen. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall also be a crown. Okay, now back up to what I just said. Go back, folks, to the promise and draw on grace. Put on praise in the midst of your deadness, in the midst of what you see as dead. I don't see anything happening in my life. I don't understand why that promise hasn't come to pass. What happened? It got shot down. It's dead. There's nothing there. And I'm here to declare to you and to your family and to your situation and to this city and to the churches in this city that this is a new day. This is a new day. God is turning things around. As you declare with your mouth that it is no longer dead. By the grace of God, he's going to turn things around. Lift up your hands in here. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are turning things around. You are turning things around. Wow. Give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He delights in you, folks. He delights in you. Now, Paul goes on in verse 21 and says that he is fully convinced that God, that what God promised, he was also able to perform. Let's look at one more uh, scripture before I close here. Uh, I'm going to do something. Remember I said we're going to go up a level? One of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing that maybe you don't understand this word, but I'm going to show you what it means in just a few minutes, is that he, he wants us to activate things in our life. He doesn't want us just saying, oh, yes, that's good, I like that, or... Yes, I'll pray that. He wants us to activate it in our life. So we're going to activate things this morning before we leave. So um, 
One of the things that I want us to do this morning is look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Let's look at this scripture together and let's read it uh, together. Can we do that? Do, do we have that one up there? Okay. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Okay, stop. Let's stop. Go back to that one. So, he's, he's promised you rest, right? So, stop striving. Don't, don't strive anymore. Don't. Because striving brings confusion, doubt, fear, all kinds of other things that you don't need or want. But yet we're always going there. And then we run to our pastor and say, Pastor, I've got fear. I've got worry. I've got doubt. Well, where's it coming from? Well, I've got all this, that, and the other thing. Well, why aren't you on the side of rest? That's where you need to be, you know. So we need to come into rest and then we won't have that other. Okay, now go to verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So faith is a vital key in all of this. We, we don't have time to go into all the, the things with this. I could do a teaching until tonight. If you want to stay, then stay till tonight. But we don't have time for all this. Verse uh, 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest. So just a minute. Stop. Belief. That's a big part that plays in here. Belief is a huge part. How, how do I gain the rest? You believe. That's, that's a huge part of the rest it's not, a, it's not a huge deal. How did you, how did you become a Christian? You didn't, you didn't go to... Now, this is the way that we become a Christian. When you accept Jesus, you accept him by faith. That's how you do it. You rest in the promise that he died for your sins and took away your shame, your guilt, all that stuff, and you accepted the cross as your sacrifice, Okay? That's what it means. It's the same thing here. That's how you accept that rest. You believe it. He's, he's done it. So you believe it. So then you go, oh, praise God. He's done it for me. That's all it is. So stop striving. Don't go that way anymore. Okay? So let's go to the beginning again. For we who have believed do enter that rest as he said... So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So he already did it from the foundations of the world, and here we are trying to do all this stuff. Okay? Now, go, uh, I think that was it, right? Okay. So, when we are truly operating in faith and grace for our promises, we will know it. How? Because according to our writer here, there will be rest in God. Also notice that the word did not profit. That means exchange for increase. That's what that means. Because, now hear me now, they did not take the word seriously. And with grace, like we have learned Rest in it. Note the word believed. That means to settle in without proof that something or someone is true. He makes his point even more powerful in verse 12 when he says, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you get a word, my friend, it is alive. It's powerful. And it's true. Don't back up. Don't back down. Dig in and start praising the Lord. Do what Kathy and I do. Put your praise on. 
I, it doesn't matter to me how you do it when you're in your car, when you're in your home. Put your praise on, dance around, and say, praise God. I don't see it with my eyes, but according to that, that guy in the shirt on Sunday morning, he said, we have eagle eyes now. So I'm going to see with eagle eyes, and I'm going to start dancing around, and I'm going to say, praise God. This promise is coming to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you put that praise on and the enemy will shut up. It says you resist him like that and the Bible says he'll turn away and flee. All right. Let's, let's close everything up. You close your Bible or whatever you're writing on. I want to close with this um, this verse of Scripture, if I can, in Hebrews 4 and verse 14 to 16, that says these words. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So, um, the author here made it very simple but very profound when he said, Jesus, our high priest, has one, one very important thing that he wants us to do. Hold fast our confession. And that sometimes that's hard to do. It really is. But that's what is necessary for you and me. We need to hold fast the confession. What is it? What's the confession? It's the promise. What promise has he given you? What dream has he put in your heart? Then you need to speak over it. You need to declare it again. Again, Job 22, 28, decree that thing so that light will come to your pathway. Instead of confusion, light will come. All right, verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Jesus wants you to come boldly to him. This is a time not for, for weakness in the sense of, I'm not sure what to do, Lord. This is a time for the church to rise, to get up out of the position of weakness and say, Lord, I'm coming in your strength. I'm being baptized in your power. I'm being filled with your spirit. And I'm coming boldly into your throne. Sometimes I think the reason why we have so much weakness in the body of Christ is because we are not using the blood of Jesus Christ properly and uh, we live perpetually in our sins, and our minds are not cleansed, and so we walk around with this shame and guilt all the time, and so the devil has us right where he wants us. We are in this position spiritually. Watch me now. We are like this, walking around like this, and God wants us like this this. Hallelujah. This is the position that we need to be in. And so I'm asking you to make a, a, a different, to, to, to turn, turn yourself into a different position this morning. The Bible says, uh, make a stand. So I want you to make a stand. Would you stand with me, please? 
And I want you to make a stand. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians to take a stand and stand, therefore. So we're going to stand. And we're going to ask him to fill us. Now, remember I told you um, about this activation. But I just want you to pray in the spirit for a minute. Would you do that just uh, for those that know what that means? Just pray in the spirit for a minute. I want to see if there's maybe a prophetic word that needs to come out. Hallelujah. Pandora basanda rabobora sibi. Pandora rabobora sibi. Pandora rabobora sibi. Pandora sikata rabobi. Pandora pandora Okay. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to give the Spirit of God, just turn it down in my monitor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, one thing about the pro uh, prophecy or the prophetic is that it's nothing spooky. You know, it really isn't. God speaks to his people. Amen. And it's, uh, I find it very, very specific. I was in, uh, in Miami and I went to a meeting much smaller than this. There was maybe... 40 people in the room and uh, this assistant pastor of the church there pulled me out of the group and he spoke over my life and uh, now I understand I never met this man before he's the assistant pastor of a church of 6,000 um, he spoke over my life and he said things over me that only God between me and that is power to me that makes me say you're alive God you know anybody who would stand there and say well I don't believe that that they're either dead or something's wrong because that doesn't just happen so I'm here to tell you because that's, that's, that's an amazing thing. So, um, okay, we'll do that. I, I believe the Holy Spirit just wants me to ask um, how many this morning this message has touched your heart? You have a dream or a vision or something that has either died or it's been left on the shelf, or, and you want it reactivated. 
something happen this week because that's the kind of thing that God does. The, the, the time, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. Look at me and listen to what I'm saying. The time that we're living in is not like it once was. Things are happening faster than they used to happen. So, I can say this under the anointing and with the help of the grace of God, that if you will believe what I'm saying, this week you'll see some things already turning around. So remember I said activation is a big word today. So we're going to activate things. So what I want you to do is simply put out your hands in front of you like this. Just put your hands out like this in front of you. Okay? And by activation, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you repeat a prayer. You don't have to close your eyes for this. What you do is you just simply say what I'm going to be saying, but in your heart, you're saying it and you're going to mean it. By that, I mean, don't just pray, Heavenly Father, you know, this type of thing. I mean, mean it. We're men and women of God here, right? Amen. So we're going we're gonna to activate this thing. What we've done this morning, you've heard the Word of God now. Amen. So now you're saying, I want this thing. Okay? So now we're going to repeat this after me in phrases. And as I say the phrase, then you immediately repeat it and believe that what you're going, what you're going to be saying is going to be activated. And when you leave this place, you're going to leave under that anointing. Okay? So here we go. Father God, I thank you for what I have heard. Now I take this word by faith and declare according to Job 22, 28 that this shall be established and light will come on my pathway the promises in my life are being resurrected today they were given to me by you through your word through prophetic decree and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, I thank you, Father, that now this word is being stirred up with fire by the Holy Spirit. They will accomplish your will and desired end result because it is of faith and grace today that we declare this in Jesus name amen now give God praise <laughs> 